are hundred killed, thousands injured, and a nationwide curfew. Bangladesh has been gripped by violence amid the ongoing protests against a controversial job quota system. According to reports, this week's clashes between the student demonstrators and the police have killed at least 105 people. The protests, triggered by a recent ruling of the Bangladesh High Court, are against a contentious quota system. The court recently reinstated a 30% quota for freedom fighters and their descendants in government jobs. This quota comes amid high youth unemployment with nearly 32 million people out of work or education in the country of a total 170 million people. Here is a brief timeline that explains the events that led to the latest curfew in Bangladesh. 1975 This is the year when the quota system was first introduced in Bangladesh. The system reserved 56% of the government jobs for various groups, but the majority of these quotas benefited freedom fighters' families. 30% reservation for veterans, 10% for women, 10% for people from underdeveloped districts, 5% for tribal communities, and 1% for persons with disabilities, leaving 44% for open admission. The quota system went through many rejects, until in 2018, the Hasina government entirely scrapped the contentious system after four-month-long protests against the reservation system. But the nature of protests from 2018 is nowhere close to the protests Bangladesh is witnessing currently. Early in June this year, the Bangladesh High Court reinstated the quota system, which the country saw the students and teachers fight against just six years ago. This came after a group of people, including relatives of war veterans, reportedly approached the court. During the verdict, the court dismissed the 2018 ruling, calling it unconstitutional, illegal and ineffective. The return of the quota system led to violent protests, which so far has claimed more than 100 lives. Critics and protesters claim this system benefits pro-government groups by reserving over half of civil service positions for them. Demonstrations started early July when the verdict came out. But the real tensions escalated when one controversial statement by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina soon caught thousands of students on the streets. Prime Minister Hasina referred to the protesters as Razakar, an offensive term used to describe those who betrayed the country by collaborating with the Pakistani army in 1971. Out on streets, students started sloganering against the Hasina government. They said, who am I, who are you? Razakar, Razakar. Who said what? Who said what? Autocrat, Autocrat. With this, in less than a month, the protests took a violent turn. Rival student groups marched in several key locations around the capital Dhaka, some throwing bricks at each other. Riot police fired tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse crowds. The protesters and students, allied to the ruling party, battled on the street with bricks and bamboo rods. Soon to quell the tensions, Prime Minister Hasina addressed the nation regarding the controversial quota and pledged justice for seven killed in the demonstrations. Today's situation in the country poses a momentous challenge to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government after 15 years in office. Hundreds of Indian students have left Bangladesh as the situation in the country worsens. The unrest has also led to widespread disruption of communication services with internet and mobile services cut off in many areas. The world is watching Bangladesh. The protesters have vowed to continue their fight against the controversial reservation system. The Bangladesh Supreme Court will hear the government's challenge to the High Court's order on August 7th. This is Yashar Rai with Pavitra for NDTV.